Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're loving a lovely day. So in the past, there's been concern when it comes to ad blockers that we may be coming close to the end of ad blocking on the internet with Manifest V3 coming out. Manifest V3 was a new way of dealing with extensions inside Chrome and Chromium-based web browsers. It is claimed that the whole point of Manifest V3 versus Manifest V2 is to improve the security and privacy of the browsing experience by placing limitations on what extensions can do and how it can access your data. And the reality of how this works Worked is that it made it a lot more difficult for ad blockers to do their job. So there, there are arguments that this is technically more secure, but when the company that is driving that decision is a company whose primary business is based on selling advertisements, and this new framework for running extensions in the browser makes it more difficult to block ads, you really kind of have to wonder why it's being done, and who benefits and who doesn't benefit from this decision being made. As I've mentioned on this channel many times over a number of different issues, particularly right to repair and your ability to fix your device, it's very often the case that anytime somebody is trying to limit your freedom, they do it under the guise of security hoping that you're not going to notice what's actually going on. Now, this is something that has been somewhat rolled back. Firefox has come up with a way to deal with this. And uh, at the end of the day, I don't think that this is the last that you're going to hear of it. Something was recently announced called Web Environment Integrity, which is one of the scariest things I've heard of in my life. And it seems like what would lead to the death of the internet as we know it, or the web as we know it. It's this kind of death by a thousand cuts thing where you, if you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this. And like at the end of the day, it's, it's just a small thing things here and there that people learn to deal with. But when all of it is done, you look back five or 10 years ago, and the internet just doesn't look like it used to. And the freedoms that you used to have on the internet just aren't there like they used to be. So I'm going to read this. This is about three images that have been screenshotted and posted into my matrix chat that I've been reading about all morning in a very depressing way. Introduction. Users often depend on websites trusting the client environment they run in. This trust may assume that the client environment is honest about certain aspects of itself, keeps user data and intellectual property secure, and is transparent about whether or not a human is using it. Now, again, honest, sure. Keeps intellectual property secure. You already know where this is going before I read the rest of it. This is going to be DRM for your web browser. This trust is the backbone of the open internet, critical for the safety of user data and for the sustainability of the website's business. Some examples of scenarios where users depend on client trust include, users like visiting websites that are expensive to create and maintain, but they often want or need to do it without paying directly. These websites fund themselves with ads, but the advertisers can only afford to pay for humans to see the ads rather than robots. This creates a need for human users to prove to websites that they're human, sometimes through tasks like challenges or logins. This is about making it more difficult to block ads. I'm just going to throw that out there. I am not a technical expert. I'm not a programming expert. I'm a man that used to fix MacBook motherboards that now sits on a comically large recliner with a cat. I'm just going to throw it out there. This is going to be used to make it more difficult to block advertisements and to make it easier for streaming companies and so on and so forth to be able to ensure that you are not using a screen capture software or screen recorder like OBS to record their copyrighted content and distribute it across the internet. Users want to know they are interacting with real people on social websites, but bad actors often want to promote posts with fake engagement. For example, to promote products or make a news story seem more important. Websites can only show users what content is popular with real people if websites are able to know the difference between a trusted and untrusted environment. Google is exceptional on YouTube at being able to shadow ban your posts and sometimes even shadow ban my own posts on my own channel when I don't curse. I can't tell you how many times I've posted a comment on my own channel and then notice that it didn't actually show up. It wasn't there. It showed up in my YouTube Studio app, but it wouldn't show up in the YouTube app if I wasn't logged in. Yet for some reason, the Telegram scammers for crypto and investment garbage, to this day, after three years of reporting them as spam, still show up every single time. Google doesn't care about protecting you from fake people and bots posting. If they did, they would have figured out a way to delete that rather than prioritizing removing your post because you said something you weren't supposed to say. Users playing a game on a website want to know whether other players are using software that enforces the game's rules. So they're doing this for your own good. They're doing this so that you don't have to deal with cheaters when you're playing Yahoo Pool. Users sometimes get tricked into installing malicious software that imitates software like their banking apps to steal from those users. The bank's internet interface could protect those users if it could establish that the requests it's getting actually come from the banks or other trustworthy software. Web Environment Integrity With the Web Environment Integrity API, 
Websites will be able to request a token that attests key facts about the environment their client code is running in. For example, this API will show that a user is operating a web client on a secure Android device. Tampering with the attestation will be prevented by signing the tokens cryptographically. Websites will ultimately decide if they trust the verdict returned from the attester. It is expected that the attesters will typically come from the operating system platform as a matter of practicality. However, this explainer does not prescribe that. For example, multiple operating systems may choose to use the same attester. This explainer takes inspiration from existing native attestation signals, such as App Attest and the Play Integrity API. There is tension between utility for anti-fraud use cases requiring deterministic verdicts and high coverage and the risk of websites using this functionality to exclude specific attesters or non-attestable browsers. We look forward to discussion on this topic and acknowledge the significant value add even in the case where verdicts are not deterministically available. As in holdouts. Like, I imagine people that don't want to implement this trash into their web browser. What information is in the signed attestation? The proposal calls for at least the following information in the signed attestation. The attester's identity, for example, Google Play. A verdict saying whether the attester considers the device trustworthy. We're still discussing whether each of the following pieces of information should be included, and welcome your feedback. The device integrity verdict must be low entropy, but what granularity of verdict should we allow? Including more information in the verdict will cover a wider range of use cases without locking out older devices. A granular approach proved useful previously in the Play Integrity API. The platform identity of the application that requested the attestation, like comchrome.beta or org Mozilla Firefox or com Apple Mobile Safari, some indicator enabling rate limiting against the physical device. We strongly believe the following data should never be included. A device ID that is a unique identifier accessible to API consumers. Again, I'm a man that sits in an old lounge chair who used to fix MacBook motherboards who has a cat is unfortunately absent from this video. We'll see if she feels more welcome now that I've moved my phone. I am not an expert in this field. That being said, does this not sound like DRM for the internet to you? It really does sound like DRM for the web to me. This sounds like a world where you, are, you want me to use your browser. Your browser is likely going to have certain limitations in it as to what it is I'm capable of doing with it. And if I don't use your web browser that has this feature and functionality turned on, that there are many websites that are no longer going to accept my traffic. They're going to say no to you. Now, technically, this is something that you've been able to do for a long time. I can detect if you are using Firefox and say, my website will not work as long as your user ID is Firefox. I am going to require you to use Internet Explorer 5 or 6. And if you don't, I'm not going to return you a site. And you're able to spoof and pretend that you're Internet Explorer 6. Remember back in the day in Windows XP, if you were using Mo, uh, Mozilla, not, not Firefox, not Firebird, just old Mozilla. There were certain websites back in the Mozilla 1.0.1 .1 days that literally would not work unless you installed something that allowed you to spoof the agent to make it look like it was Internet Explorer 6. Especially government websites. Government websites, job application websites, a lot of these sites wouldn't work unless you spoofed it. And this is obviously a much more high-tech way of trying to accomplish some of the same stuff. I don't want to go back to a time where certain websites will only work if I'm using Internet Explorer 6 because Internet Explorer 6 sucked. It was just a horrible web browser for a number of reasons. But there were websites back in the day, again, lots of people watching this probably don't remember, this is 21 years ago. A lot of you probably weren't even born 21 years ago where you needed to open up a certain web browser to open certain websites. And I think people take for granted that we have choice of browsers now. And I think people take for granted that there was a certain level of freedom that we managed to uh, reach. People were aggravated by pop-ups. And one of the things that was great about Mozilla is you didn't have to install a third-party pop-up blocker because back in the day, many third-party pop-up blockers for Internet Explorer 6 were often even worse than, than the pop-ups themselves. They were filled with viruses. You installed Mozilla 1.0.1, and I could block websites from opening pop-ups. And event you know, eventually, pop-ups just disappeared. Remember when pop-ups were a thing? Uh, you know, now we have Adblock and many other things we can do with our web browsers that improve our freedom and our use of the Internet. And uh, this is an interesting and more high-tech way of trying to squash that in a way that really sucks. When you go to Hacker News, they really hit the nail on the head way better than I ever could. And admittedly, the people that post on Hacker News tend to be way smarter than I'll ever be. And one of, some of the stuff they say here I think is really important to digest. This is pretty much the inevitable end game of the web, says Sark, and no small part funded by ad-based business models, as the analog gap pretty much destroys most attempts to use this stuff to do copy protection, and enabled by developers who have insisted we shove as much difficult to implement functionality into the browser as possible. The result, there is now effectively one dominated 
leading web browser run by an ad company who nigh unto controls the spec for the web itself and who is finally putting its foot down to decide that we are all going to be forced to either use lockdown devices or prove that we are using some lockdown component of our otherwise unlocked device to see anyone's content. And they get to frame it as fighting for the user in the spec draft as users have a need to prove their authenticity to websites to get their free stuff. By the way, Brave is in the same boat. They are also an ad company, despite building ad blocking stuff themselves. And their product managers routinely discuss and even quote Brendan Eich talking about the same type of run the browser inside of trusted computing as their long term solution for preventing people from blocking their ads. The vicious irony the very tech they want to use to protect them is what will be used to protect the status quo from them. The entire premise of monetizing with ads is eventually either self defeating or the problem itself. The person who wrote the proposal, says Tanakluno, is from Google. All the authors of the proposal are from Google. I've been thinking carefully about this comment, but I really don't know what to say. It's absolutely heartbreaking watching something I really care about die by a thousand cuts. How do we protest this? Google would just strong iron their implementation through Chromium, and when banks and Netflix start using it, they've effectively cornered other engines into implementing it. And again, this is an excellent point. It's very difficult to get people to try alternative operating systems for their phone. If you tell somebody you run stock Android, you should consider Lineage, or Calyx, or Graphene, or something else, they're going to stare at you like you're a dragon. If you look at somebody who's using Chrome and say, you should use LibreWolf or Brave, they're going to stare at you like you're a dragon. If you tell somebody, hey, you should use Firefox or LibreWolf or whatever, and not only are you asking them to use something different, but this different thing doesn't work with Netflix, doesn't work with news websites, they're going to they're gonna dump it immediately and go back to the limited walled garden environment because 99% of your normie users, again, if they can't get their Netflix, if they can't get their Reddit or whatever else, they're out. Look at how abysmal the market share is of many alternative browsers in a world where they can use Netflix, they can use YouTube, they can go to your news website. This isn't new to them. They did it with FLOC, which most people were opposed to. The most they did with FLOC was deprecate it and re-release it under a different name. The saving grace here may be that Firefox won't implement the proposal. SpySat says, how do we protest this? You do not and you cannot. It was written in stone once Chrome dominated the browser market. What Chrome, Google wants, Chrome, Google gets. Despite all the good engineering, Google wants to sell ads. That's all there is to it. And the result is this proposal. The saving grace being Firefox, that's irrelevant. We are an irrelevant minority. Unless people switch to Firefox and droves, the web is Chrome. And they won't because at the end of the day, people just want to get home from their shitty jobs and stream a show. As long as that works, everything else is a non-issue. They talk about trying to get everybody to use Firefox, but again, that is a meme. It's, and and this, this is the part that really hurts from PEW. There's no easy way to say this. Firefox is never coming back. The web of old is never coming back. It's over. Even if this particular proposal gets defeated somehow, a future similar proposal will make its way through. There is nothing you or I can do about it. Google is more powerful than most governments, and they are vastly more powerful than any random group of like-minded people who get together on the internet in the belief that they can accomplish something. I don't want to go down without a fight. I don't think any of us should go down without a fight. I like the internet of old. And dare I say it, I like the internet of old a little bit more than the internet of new. I like when I could Google something and not find a page that sounds like it was either produced by some copy pasta factory in Bangladesh or ChatGPT. That would be the number one or two result. I kind of like the web before, just the shit pile of ads. Be honest with you, there's some things I like about the new web, some things I like about discovery on YouTube, but for the most part, I kind of liked when there was a bit more user freedom in general. And the little things like this, again, you have less freedom when it comes to repairing your device. You have less freedom when it comes to being able to own your device. You have less freedom to install the operating system of your choice on the computer that you purchase. And let's be real, this is a computer. Locking the bootloader and not allowing you to install an operating system of your choice is just as offensive to me on a personal computer disguised as a smartphone as it is on a personal computer that looks like a desktop tower. And now you're not even going to be able to visit certain websites unless your very locked down browser is trusted by the website. I think that these top posts are correct. I think this is the end of the open web as we know it. And I think, unfortunately, as they say, the hacker news type of crowd is 0.0001% of the internet. And they don't care. 
I've looked at my own employees and asked, why use Chrome? Even if you want a Chromium-based browser, there are numerous implementations of Chrome that have a lot less Google crap in it, a lot less tracking, a lot less junk. They're trying to get rid of Adblock with Manifest V3. When you look at the average person and you say Manifest V2 versus Manifest V3, they look at you like you are a dragon. Huh? And then they just move on. They shake their head at you. They laugh like you're insane, like you belong in a padded room. And then they move on with their life because 99% of the general public doesn't care about this until it gets to the point that it affects them personally, until the point that it is a problem for them that aggravates them. And by then, it tends to be too late. The question is, will it be too late when it comes to this? That's for all of you to decide. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I overreacting? Do you think that this is a good proposal? Or do you think that this is DRM for the internet in the most restrictive way possible? And that we really are going back to the days where like you had to figure out a way to spoof your browser so that it looks like Internet Explorer 6 so that you could apply for your workman's comp benefits on the city website. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. I am incredibly, incredibly disappointed that in spite of moving my phone off of the chair, Blackberry, Clinton, or Oreo have not joined me for this video. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. Bye now.